again. I enjoyed Brother Michael's sermon this morning, and it made me think of the first time that I was called Daddy uh, in February the 8th of 1996. I held my daughter for the first time, and for somehow she grabbed my little finger, and the picture that he had on there reminded me of that. And ever since then, she's had this big old man wrapped around her finger. And that's, that's what a daddy, it just brought out a lot of feelings that, that I see. I sat back there and cried like a little baby. So, Well, I, I, I was thinking of what could I preach on this evening. I knew there was going to be a small crowd because of camp. And, and I thought about Father's Day and I said, well, Brother Mike is probably going to do something. And then I said, well, my anniversary is tomorrow. Me and my wife will be married 19 years tomorrow. And then it dawned on me, I'm going to preach on hell. <laughs> I'm not going to coordinate the two together. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to say it's one like the other. But I do love you, honey. But that is our subject tonight. Hell. Hell is a real place. It is not a fairy tale. It's not a myth or it's not a legend. If you will turn with me to Revelations 21 and verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and the sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That's not a very good picture to, to, to paint that you want to go to. We read and we sing and we talk about the splendors of heaven, but we never stop and, and stop and really ponder what hell will be like. So I want to look at some things that if you get to hell, what will you have? The first thing I want you to look at is we will have sight. Luke 16 and verse 23. And in hell he lifted his eyes, and being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Can't you see, can't you ever seen something and, and because of the, the pain that you were in or, or the, the hard times that you were going through, ain't that torment to see somebody having a good time? You know, I remember my, my daddy telling me as a small child, I'd, I'd go to the fence and look at the other kids playing over there because I didn't have a swing set. And I would cry and cry. I guess that was torment to me. I mean, I was just a little thing. I wanted to go swing. He said, Mama called him at work crying and said, and I got a swing set. So sight can be such a torment to us. That's one thing we'll have. The other thing is we will have feeling. Luke, the 16th chapter, and verse 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, and may he dip the tip of his finger into water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. I know you ladies and some of, some of you men go and, and cook and, and, and I know you've touched them hot pans and it don't take you long to say, ouch! And I, I've been working out in the field with a torch and get something and, and it don't take me long to turn it loose. But think about this, when you're in hell, you can't turn hell a loose. That, 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 that eternal pain, that torture, be with you forever and you can't get rid of it you can't get around nowhere where you won't feel it the next thing we will have is memories Luke 16 going to 27 and 28 verse then I say I pray thee therefore father that thou will would ascend him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, 
that ye may testify unto them, lest they also come to this place of torment. If you get there and you and you can remember your your brothers, sisters, people that you love, your family members, your your wife or your husband or, or even your children, if you could somehow send a message back to them saying, you know, from beyond, change your life, repent, become a Christian because you don't want to come here, but you can't. So the memories will torment us in hell. Let's ask the question, who will inhabit hell? The first one is the devil and his angels. If we will look at Matthew 25 and verse 41, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. That's all hell was prepared for. But we know that more and more will be added to it. Let's go on. Who else will be in hell? How about the people from Sodom and Gomorrah? Look at Jude 7. Even as of Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh and set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal They live their lives so evil, so wicked, their eternal reward is hell. And of course, the obvious, those who have never obeyed the gospel. You will look at 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 through 9. And to, and to you whom are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. We have people in this community, in this county, in this state that is not members of the body of Christ. It's our job to preach it, to teach it, to get them that way. And we know we're not going to get 100% but we have to strive that every soul is critical. Every person you meet, you have to plant the seed. But the saddest one that you can think of, the saddest possible thought that you could picture, the person that you can picture in hell, is the erring child of God. 2 Peter 2, verses 20 through 22. For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it has been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it and turned from the holy commandments delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. My friends, we are all Christians. 
that are here. I, you know, the, these are the tried and true people that you see on Sunday night and Wednesday night. You know, it's like the old, the old uh, quotation, you know, you're preaching to the choir, you know. But we can all, we can all slip and fall. And if we don't ask for that forgiveness, where will our destination be? If we go back into the world, and yes, it's so easy. It's easy, very easy. But we have to keep ourselves strong. We have to keep the shield and the sword handy so that we don't do that. We don't slip and go back. To know the way and not follow it and spending eternity in hell would be the worst torment of all. Knowing that when you get there, I could have had better. I could be with the Savior. I could be with my friends and my loved ones that have made it. But as we said, hell is a real place. Heaven is also that real place. John 14, 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. What a wonderful promise that this verse gives us. Going to a place where we don't hurt anymore. But we don't need the walkers. We don't need the eyeglasses. We don't have the aches and pains that we do. What a wonderful verse. But also, what a, let's look at what we have forward to in Revelation 21 and verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more pain death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be no more pain for their former things are passed away now which picture do you want to spend eternity in, in those verses the first verse I read talking about the lake of fire or this one here. It's either heaven or hell and the choice is yours. The only question we have is what will your answer be? Tonight we do have an opportunity if you need to come back, if you slipped away, and if you, if you sinned in any way, you need the prayers of the church and, of the, church and, the, and the encouragement, we have that opportunity. But you, if you have never obeyed the gospel and never put him on in baptism, you also have that opportunity. And together as we stand and as we sing.